How's it going everybody? Bob here and in this video we are going to cover baby to do or not to do the challenge that is part of the OWASP top 10 track on Hack the Box. Uh, get your Hack the Box system ready, get your account, log in, spawn pwn box, set up your VM, and get connected. This is going to be a hands-on lab, this is going to be a hands-on challenge. Now, again, if you don't follow along with these videos as I'm doing them, it's fine to just watch. But again, remember, the best way to learn this stuff is by following along and doing it, engaging with it, asking questions. So if you ever have any questions about anything we talk about, put it in the comments below. So in this challenge, um, baby to do or not to do, um, it's a little bit different from other challenges on Hack the Box that you might have done. Um, they actually give you the web application that we're testing. So not only are we testing this application as it's spawned up on Hack the Box's network, we also have access to the files. And I want to show you this right here. I've already got these downloaded, but um, because I use Pwnbox, which is that browser-based VM again, um, I logged into the website from in Hack the Box, as weird as that seems, Hack the Box section. I opened up a browser, logged into Hack the Box, and I clicked download files, and it downloads a zip file with all of the, the Python and JavaScript and all the files, uh, source code for the web application that we're actually targeting. And that's because this this challenge does require it. Now, if there is a way that y'all can figure out how to um, get the flag on this box without looking at the source code of the application, let me know. You might have found an automated way of doing it. I pretty much manually exploit this in this video. It's pretty straightforward, and I hope you learn something from it. So again, download this file, get it on your your desktop in poem box or on your your vm and let's get to it now um you'll notice i got that zip as soon as you click on this or try to extract it there's a it's password protected but the password is hacked the box to be able to extract that file um or you know decompress that zip file now but, you know, as always, the first thing you want to do when you're, you know, testing the app is go to the site, right? So this is the first thing I did. And again, like like many other uh, challenges, I've done this before. So the fact that I know exactly where to go in these videos, don't let that deceive you into thinking that this is my first time. Okay. I This is not my first time doing this. So um, this is, you know, we go to the, the app and we should always have that what does this button do mindset. So it's called to do or not to do, you know, eat a grilled cheese Sammy. You know what I mean there? And you hit enter and it's adding a to-do list. So this is a web app that give, that's a to-do list web app. So if I want to delete that or complete that, I can do that. So anytime you're testing a web app, I don't personally recommend just immediately go to, you know, bombarding it with all these attacks. I think you should try to play with the functionality a little bit. See what kind of, what exists on the site, what kind of links are clickable, what buttons are clickable, where, where, what different, you know, web directories are there, you know, discover web directories. In this case, we're, we're playing with it. We also need to go to burp. So open up burp. Remember what burp is? It's a web proxy. It allows us to capture and re, you know, repeat requests, change requests, manipulate requests into, you know, trying different attacks. Um, the main thing we're using in it, in it for right now is capturing those web requests and seeing if we can find any information in those web requests that could benefit us. So I'm going to target. And the reason I'm going to target is so I can open up the browser built into burp. So I don't have to really mess around with my main browsers proxy settings. I'm going to paste that in same thing we did in, in the 
the other default Firefox browser. And here's our initial web request. Of course, Interceptor is on. Let's leave that on. Forward. And when we forward, okay, it's got press start, forward again, and we see something interesting here. This is something I, I, you, you should make note of. Right here, we're looking at a get request. This is HTTP get request. And right here, it's showing us an API, right? The API list. And it's giving us a user ID. It's also giving us a secret. This is a hard-coded secret session token of some kind, session identifier of some kind, and it's hard-coded. We didn't type any, think about it, how do I know immediately it's hard-coded? I didn't type a password or a username and a password combination to log in to this website to use the functionality. So it's not tracking my session via an account I logged in as. This is already, it's being tracked using that user identifier and this session identifier. So what, what else can we do with that? Not much, right? I mean, I can send this over to Repeater and I have it in Repeater because Repeater makes it easier for me to go in here and change the request I want and send it to the target. So we're, we're going to leave that there. And then the next thing is we want to see what this application is made up of. So this is the part where you're kind of practicing a little bit of source code review, right? So I go in here. I can, you know, I poke through these folders. I look around. What does this button do? What does this file do? You know, what, what are what's models, util, so, you know, I click on util and we see some verify integrity function. It's Python Flask. You know, it says, you know, from Flask. So we're, we're getting somewhere. We see the .py files. You know, we know that's Python. This is still information that, yes, it's, it may help. It's not helping us get to that flag. It's not helping us really understand the vulnerability we haven't uncovered anything yet but we're just we're discovering information remember that oftentimes you discovering the vulnerability comes in the process of you discovering more about the application or the environment that you're testing so try not to put too much pressure on yourself to just get it right away right so um, models, app, pi, I can click in here, static. I see some JavaScript files. That's the main JavaScript file. Uh, templates here. Index HTML, that's usually, you know, what you already see. Models. And I'm just looking through here, you know, I see the word password. You know, sometimes you could find hard-coded credentials in source code. Um, blueprints routes so this is going to be a file that is of interest to us so we're clicking routes this could route requests to different apis which an api and i'm going to pull this up on a side note so you're aware apis if you didn't know are application programming interfaces and i am sorry for flash for the flash bang i apologize for that so according to red hat uh, APIs are application programming interfaces, interfaces uh, that are a set of definitions and protocols for building and integrating application software. So APIs can be used for a lot of different things. You know, one is to make use of a very specific functionality that a technology is capable of. Uh, when I think of APIs, I often think of Uber and Google Maps. For example, you know Google Maps is the navigation app you have on your phone. If you've ever used Uber to call a cab, it typically will use whatever the default Maps app is to you know, allow that driver to come pick you up. If you've ever been a driver, you know when you accept a ride, it immediately navigates to the, uh, the rider and it uses the Maps app for that. Now, where does that 
where does APIs matter in that spiel? Well, you know, not everybody has to build an entire map of a digital map of the world like Google and Apple have with, you know, Google Maps and Apple Maps. So if they've already done all that work, a lot of times they will just build in a, an API that allows external companies and organizations and people to use that API to take advantage of that awesome functionality that is the ability to have a map of the entire world. Like Uber's core functionality is, I think, connecting users pretty seamlessly, but they didn't necessarily have to go out there and send all their, you know, a fleet of cars over many, many years to go map streets and, you know, use satellites to map everything. Like that's our, that stuff's already out there. Those applications were already built. So why not have some type of interface to be able to extend the functionality out to other organizations, companies, products, and services? So that's what an API is. In this case, the API allows this to-do app to have different kinds of functionality. So there's different types of API calls and requests happening based on what it is we're trying to do. So in this case, uh, if we go back to um, Burp and we look at this, this API is listing the tasks for this user right so i could you know grill you know like i mentioned earlier you know drink a soda and you know hit enter i could forward that keep going let me try it's making me a liar i'll show you uh, let me show you in the app itself so if we grab this right here yeah agree to grill cheese sammy sammy drink a soda enter these are these are using it's using an api to list tasks it's we can look at other apis list assignee add right so anytime we add a task you know, that's a different API. So APIs for different tasks are there. And when I say, <coughs> excuse me, when I say tasks, I also mean, you know, actions within this web app. And we know that from this app. And if, you know, as you want to, you know, learn more and more about um, how the app works, you know, you can, you can nowadays, I'm telling you, I'm not saying it's perfect, but you can take source code copy and paste it in the chat GPT and ask chat GPT about it. One other thing we see here is there are not view arguments involved. I hope this doesn't break the authentication control on the verify integrity decorator. So I guess the devs here had some known issues with the source code. Um, another thing I found as I was right click, you can right click the actual page, view page source, Look around in here and notice it says don't use get status all until we get the verify integrity patch. So verify integrity is mentioned multiple times. And we're also given this, you know, session identifier here. So what I want to show you is what I tried. And as I was trying this, I had some success in being able to find a vulnerability, which Another thing you'll notice is as you do these challenges, you'll see titles that kind of give away what uh, type of vulnerability it is. So if I look at the title right here, and I'll zoom in on that, you can see broken authentication control. So, you know, it helps us a little bit with enumeration on these OWASP top 10 challenges because we don't necessarily have to discover what kind, we, we know what ballpark I guess you, you could say the, the uh, vulnerability will be in. So what I started doing after I found routes.py really, and I, I noticed we have some, some APIs to play with, I saw this right here, list all. 
And I looked at the get requests and I thought, well, there's list and then there's user and there's this hard coded secret right here. So what if I remove this and I tried list all send that and look in the request here. I'll move myself out of the way so you can see. I start seeing in JSON data return, so tasks. So the the actual assignee who who assigned the task, which we're not admin, we're you know, we're a user, right? I removed it, but I don't know it off the top of my head. It was right here that user. We're 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 a different user. We're not admin. We didn't create any of these tasks. So as you look through here there's a flag. So you grab this flag, copy and paste it in there. And that challenge, I, I like that it was an easy challenge. Um, there was essentially no authentication control. So you would consider that broken authentication control, broken access control is what it's currently called because there's no access control really at all in place you know and if it was there the developers of this web app you know of course it was on purpose but within the narrative of this web app they didn't fix whatever whatever uh, function was supposed to verify the integrity of it before allowing access to see the tasks created by other users and you know namely you know admin here so this is how you get the flag, and then you're done with this challenge. Um, again, this is considered broken access control because, you know, it is what it is, right? It doesn't even check. You don't have to log in. So if we were thinking about, you know, how to, how to make this better, how could we secure this? You know, we would, we would try to build in a login page enforcing authentication that would grant session IDs, session tokens, session cookies to the, the logged in user that was specific to their session and does not allow access to the, to do API, to send requests to API list all. They should get a error or just flat out denied from being able to do this request. This, you know, hard coded secret should not be there. That would not, that would not be necessary in, um, in the case that we have, a, you know, have to log in. So I, I think that would be the route I would go in, you know, fixing this is let's just, this build an entire, you know, web, a, a, a login page and an authentication mechanism where everybody needs a username and password, which obviously, you, you know, you're going to need some database action going there as well, but it would, it would be worth it, you know, in the long run. So um, I have seen some uh, multiplayer web games, fun, you know, fun type web games, that use the same method of playing the game. So if you were trying to restrict access to a session, like let's say you and your friends are playing and you got a, you want it to be a private server, but all, all that's restricted by is some type of server name, then all people would have to know is the server name, right? Whereas if you build in the ability to have user accounts, then you can, you can, you have more, flexibility to lock down who can see what right um and that's me just you know summarizing a bit let me know if you have any questions about this challenge if you have any other insight that you want to provide on you know authentication control this challenge in particular apis whatever you want to add please add it in the comments below and until next time keep learning